The subcommittee will come to order and the checker, chair recognizes himself for an opening statement. We have a lot of progress to report. For today's markup, we have made some changes to the Tosca Modernization Act draft, but our basic approach remains the same. The focus is still on creating a system by which the EPA can scrutinize chemicals on the market and make science-based decisions about whether they pose an unreasonable risk of injury to human health or the environment. Current law makes the risk determination and the decision about how to regulate, if regulation is warranted, part of the same process. We break this out as two distinct steps. First, the agency will evaluate whether the combination of hazard and exposure warrants any regulation at all. This decision is based on science, not economics. The second step is choosing how to regulate, if regulation is needed. This decision brings in the economic factors, including benefits of the chemical, economic consequences of the rule, whether the rule is cost effective, and whether alternatives are available. And whatever the rule is, it must allow a reasonable transition period. Once EPA decides on a chemical and on whatever uses for it are known or intended, the decision applies coast to coast. The bill preserves certain state laws that are not in conflict with TSCA and private rights of action in tort or contract law. We added language on user fees that was requested by both EPA and the industry. The concern is fees paid into EPA for a specific purpose are used just for that purpose, and the fees are set at a level that's not higher than necessary to carry out the purpose for which they are paid. The fees will be paid into a special account which will be audited on a regular basis. There is another important change we must address. Language in the original draft to require that EPA update the inventory of chemicals that is maintained under TSCA Section 8 is deleted. The draft before us now has no language amending Section 8. Many have expressed a desire to make improvements under Section 8 of TSCA. In fact, members on both sides are poised to engage with one another of, on these concerns. Most of them have two things in common. One, they involve either concerning implementation issues or what appears to be paperwork and reporting requirements that the stakeholders consider unneeded, duplicative, or expensive, bureaucratic red tape. Or two, EPA has authority to fix them all. These all sign, sound like legitimate concerns. For my colleagues interested in fixing certain aspects of Section 8, I encourage them to work in a bipartisan manner as we move to full committee. We can then look to address these concerns through the amendment process with support from both sides of the aisle. And I would just say to my colleagues, we would like these changes to come in a bipartisan manner uh, and brought forward so that we can, like we've done on this process of the, the full mark. We have come a long way toward TSCA reform in the past few years. Today marks another step in the process, but we still have a long way to go. That said, I am more encouraged now than ever that we can get through this to the finish line. With the continued effort of members from both parties and both chambers, I urge my colleagues to vote yes to move the draft to the full committee for consideration. With that, I yield back the balance of my time, and I recognize the ranking member of the subcommittee, Mr. Tonko, for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, chair, and uh, we're here today to mark up a discussion draft that amends the Toxic Substances Control Act. And I want to begin by thanking you, as chair of the subcommittee, and Chairman Upton for working with both Ranking Member Pallone and myself on this legislation. I would also want to uh, single out some of the uh, most involved individuals in the process, David McCarthy and Jerry Corey for their work with subcommittee staff and uh, thank them very much, along with Jackie Cohen, who I know has uh, put forth a, a great deal of effort from our side with the subcommittee staff. And Chris Sarley, uh, from your personal staff, thank you. And uh, to our personal staff member, Gene Frucci, thank you, Gene, for your outstanding work. This draft represents a lot of hard work and willingness to compromise. The draft reflects the concerns and the input we receive from witnesses at our hearings and from the wide array of stakeholders who have an interest, a deep-rooted interest in this law. We have found common ground on many difficult issues. We truly have been partners in this effort, and I appreciate the constructive process that has brought us to this point. Since its enactment in 1976, 
TOSCA has never met the public's expectation that this Federal program would ensure that chemicals in the products they use every day are indeed safe. TOSCA does not provide the Environmental Protection Agency sufficient authority to act, even in cases where harm is clearly evident. This situation is unacceptable. I think 40 years of a failed policy is time enough. The public deserves a chemical regulatory program that protects public health and the environment. This bill will provide that protection. Industry also needs a better law. Public confidence is essential to the success of any company that wants consumers to buy its products. Ineffective Federal policy does not inspire consumer confidence, and the United States chemical industry is in a better position globally if its product claims are backed by a credible Federal regulatory system. At the start of our Committee's work on this, I knew the subcommittee could produce a bill. I truly believed it. It was less certain whether we could produce a bill that could become a law. That draft, this draft before us, puts us on the path to a law. It is a good bill and I support it. There are a number of important features of this draft that make it a significant improvement over current law and as compared to the bill under consideration in the U.S. Senate. This bill will protect human health and the environment. EPA will evaluate chemicals and if a risk is identified, the agency has a clear mandate to reduce that risk. That is what should happen. The law should prevent people from being exposed to harmful chemicals that will impact their health. And when EPA acts, the agency will address risks to both the general population and to specific groups that may be a greater risk. That is about delivering hope. That is the incentive that inspires us. The bill also creates a fast track for EPA to deal with the worst chemicals those that are not only toxic, but that persist in the environment for long periods, and that can become concentrated in animal and human tissue. And the bill preserves the important roles that States play in co-enforcing Federal law and acting on behalf of its citizens through State laws and when no Federal action is taken. As I said earlier, this draft bill represents compromise. It is not a perfect bill, but it is a good bill. It would replace an ineffective law with one that offers real public health protections. That is a very important accomplishment. The complete new draft has been publicly available only for a few days. We still have additional work to do on some issues. We need to hear from the administration, and I know that they have a few remaining items they would like to see clarified. There are still some important constituencies that may have concerns. I hope we will be able to resolve some of these issues before the bill's consideration by the full committee, and I remain confident that we can reach agreement on these remaining issues and continue to move forward. I urge my colleagues to support this bill. And again, I thank you, Mr. Chair. Your leadership has delivered a good product from this subcommittee, and I thank our two uh, leaders, uh, both Chairman Upton and our Ranker uh, Representative Pallone. I look forward to continuing our work together on this very important issue. And with that, I yield back. Thank you. The Chair, uh, the gentleman yields back his time. Chair now recognizes the Chairman of the Full Committee, Mr. Upton, for five minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I echo your comments and Mr. Tomko's comments uh, to, uh, relating to being very grateful for the staff uh, working not only this year, <laughs> but last year, too. And uh, I think that we've uh, got a very good product here that clearly is uh, the effort of bipartisan work, and we, we look uh, forward to working to, to get this bill uh, to the finish line, uh, certainly through our committee and, and onto the ho uh, House floor, but it is really because of the commitment of uh, Mr. Tomko and Mr. Shimkus, who have really partnered uh, to get this thing done, and uh, credit to both of you uh, for sure. Today is an important milestone in our multi-Congress, multi-year effort to modernize our nation's chemical safety law for the 21st century. This subcommittee has also accomplished a lot working together since the hearings on the original draft of the bill. The bill before us today is a model of how we can roll up our sleeves and write bipartisan legislation that's good for human health and the environment and certainly good for the economy, too. This bill will give a mom in Kalamazoo confidence that the product that she buys with American-made chemicals are safe for all of her family. 
and it will provide a clear regulatory roadmap giving the auto industry in Michigan and every other manufacturer across the country the certainty that they need to continue to grow our economy and create the jobs that we all want. This draft continues to focus on the essential elements of TSCA reform while incorporating some refinements to the original draft. The heart of the bill is how it deals with chemicals that are already on the market. It requires evaluation of both hazard and exposure for a chemical substance before EPA starts regulating. If EPA determines that a chemical needs regulation, it must consider economic consequences of the rule, including effects on the economy, small business innovation, cost effectiveness, and availab availability of substitutes before it settles on the regulation. And as was noted, it must provide a reasonable transition rule for compliance. The bipartisan bill continues to strike a fair balance between facilitating interstate and international commerce and the role of the states in protecting both human health and the environment and its citizens' right to seek private remedies under tort and contract law. It also improves upon protection of confidential business information, which is so vital to innovation and economic growth. At the same time, it allows access to information to state officials and health care professionals who need it. EPA's Assistant Administrator Jim Jones was very helpful at our legislative hearing, providing both encouragement and constructive suggestions. And many of his suggestions appear in the draft before us. We also appreciate the technical assistance that EPA has given us all along the way. While the bill is a little bit longer than it was in April, for sure, it is still clear and workable for the agency that must administer it, for the industry that must live with it, and for the public at large. So, Mr. Chairman, this is a bill that we can all be proud of. I look forward to further milestones, moving it through the full committee and ultimately to the President's desk. After nearly 40 years on the books, we are making the improvements necessary to bring TSCA into the 21st century. Yield back. Gentlemen, yield back as time. Chair now recognizes the, the ranking member of the full committee, Mr. Pallone, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to start by thanking uh, the chairman of the subcommittee and the chairman of the full committee for working with Mr. Tonko and, and other Democrats on the new discussion draft of the TSCA Modernization Act and, of course, all the staff that worked so hard. This new draft includes significant improvements sought by committee Democrats in response to the concerns we heard at the hearing last month. Uh, chairman Shimkus and Chairman Upton, you deserve credit for a robust collaborative process and for a strong product. And I'm happy to support this bill, and I hope my colleagues will join me in doing so. This is not a finished product, and more work remains to be done. I look forward to continuing to work with the chairs who move to full committee consideration. But already this draft is more protective, less preemptive, and better written than any other recent TSCA reform proposal. Improving the Federal Government's ability to identify and manage risks from the chemicals manufactured and processed in this country is critical. For 40 years, TSCA has, TSCA has failed to protect human health and the environment from dangerous chemicals including lead, asbestos, benzene, and BPA. Without an effective Federal program, the American public has relied on State action, consumer awareness campaigns, and when harm is not prevented, the civil justice system. And people want and deserve more. For six years now, there has been widespread agreement among industry, labor, and non-governmental organizations that TSCA needs to be reformed. There has even been bipartisan agreement on that point, although a bipartisan package long eluded us. This draft brings us closer to reform than we have ever been before. The risks from toxic chemicals in our environment and the products we use every day are serious and pressing. It is time to act. Although this bill will not be the end of our work to address toxic chemicals, it is a strong beginning and will offer significant protections. Under this draft, EPA will have better tools to get information about potentially dangerous chemicals. They will have more resources to review those chemicals, and they will face fewer obstacles when they move to regulate those chemicals and address risks. The most dangerous chemicals, those that are persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic, will receive expedited action so that we can start getting those chemicals out of our environment as soon as possible. Decisions about what chemicals need to be regulated will be made without consideration of costs and risk to vulnerable populations will have to be addressed. The public will have more information about chemical risks because of greater transparency. And with time, EPA will approve chemicals that they know do not present and will not present unreasonable risks, providing consumers with safer choices. 
The draft also avoids some of the significant concerns that have been raised about past proposals, such as limits on the ability of EPA to regulate articles and limits on the ability of states to be partners in enforcement. The preemption provisions in this draft are even better than the last draft, explicitly preserving state laws for air and water quality and existing state chemical laws. Of course, this is a compromise bill and still just a draft. We are aware of some small technical edits that will be needed, as well as some larger outstanding issues, including the protections for private rights of action. But I have confidence that we will continue to work to ensure that the language is clear and does what it is intended to do. Again, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for working with Democrats on this package. I support this bill because it will empower EPA to identify and manage risks from dangerous chemicals, protecting health and the environment, and preventing harm. And I look forward to advancing this draft and continuing to work as we move to full committee and to the floor. But I really can't uh, thank everyone enough. I, I, uh, I don't want to prolong uh, the time here, but I, I've said to many of you, I remember uh, six years ago when the President was first elected and when uh, the EPA Administrator um, um, was, uh, had a meeting with some of us, and not everyone was here there because not everybody was here six years ago, and um, Lisa Jackson, who was the Administrator from New Jersey, um, said that if we didn't address this issue, um, you know, we were missing one of the major environmental concerns and causes for harm that we face in the country. And that was six years ago. But through the efforts uh, of this uh, committee and the leadership of the committee, we've managed to get to this point. And I think it's a significant uh, progress uh, on, on, a, on a very important uh, area uh, of the environment. So thank you again, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. And thank you. Uh, the Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Latta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I would like to ask unanimous consent that uh, my opening statement be submitted for the record. Without objection, and all members will have their uh, opening statements submitted in the record if they so desire. Uh, chair recognizes the, um, we'll just go to uh, Mr. Green, um, Mr. Sh I have Mr. Green. Thank you, Chairman and Ranking Member of, the, uh, of both the full committee and our subcommittee for the leadership and hard work on this bipartisan discussion draft. Our committee has tried to reauthorize TSCA for the past three Congresses. It's very complicated law with lots of moving parts that touches every American consumer in a wide range of sectors in our nation's economy. This is especially the case in my district in East Harris County, Texas, home to the chemical facilities, the workers who make the products the fence line communities next to these facilities and the working families that use the products made from these chemicals every day. I am happy with many of the changes made in the discussion draft since our last hearing. It directly responds to most of the concerns we heard in testimony from EPA and stakeholders, including lowering the bar to, initial a risk, uh, to initiate a risk evaluation, create a dedicated trust fund, ensuring that identified risk to the vulnerable pop subpopulations. <clears throat> such as uh, children, women, uh, pregnant women and workers will be addressed in risk management. I also like to thank both sides for their work on the amendment that will be considered shortly, uh, to, uh, considering the limit definition of requirements under TSCA. It is an important addition to the draft and I ask for your support. It is important to remember that this is not a finished product. It is a discussion draft and improvements will be made before our full committee markup. But this is a very good product and a really good effort and compromise between Republicans and Democrats that will give EPA clear authority to assess and, if necessary, manage chemicals that will improve the health and safety of the American people and bring much needed regular, regulatory uh, clarity to the industry. It is clear improvement over the current TSCA and has a real chance of becoming a law and finally reauthorizing this critical statute after 39 years. And I yield back the Gentleman yields back his time. Chair now recognizes the other gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Johnson, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, want to first express my support for the Tosca Modernization Act of 2015. This legislation is the product of countless hours of hard work, bipartisan negotiations, and most importantly, will help improve chemical safety while supporting innovation and economic growth. I also remain hopeful that the committee can come to an agreement on how best to address certain cumbersome and duplicative reporting requirements under Section 8 of TSCA. 
It is very unfortunate that current requirements essentially create an incentive to landfill many inorganic byproducts rich in valuable metals like copper. While leading printed circuit board manufacturers, for instance, are choosing to re members to, to highlight uh, uh, this area in Section 8 where I think we can work together to reprioritize EPA's resources uh, in a way that does discourage companies from this recycling. That certainly is not uh, you know, the intent, uh, but under the current chemical data reporting rule, uh, just emphasize uh, what Congressman Johnson talked about. Uh, these byproducts are sent for recycling, must now be inventory and subject to new requirements. Uh, support it conditionally at this point and see what the final product looks like. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. S seeing no one else wishing to make an opening statement, the Chair calls up the TOSCA Modernization Act of 2015 and asks the Clerk to report. Discussion draft to modernize the Toxic Substances Control Act and for other purposes. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with, and the bill will be open for amendments at any point so ordered. Uh, for what purposes, the gentleman from New York? I ask uh, recognition. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the discussion draft offered by Mr. Tonko. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. Well, I'll just take a few moments to. Uh, highlight that this uh, amendment offers several technical changes. Uh, we have been working in a bipartisan strategy here. I understand that it has been worked out with our colleagues in the majority and um, offer these technical changes in the form of this amendment. With that, I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. Uh, and uh, I will seek uh, time to, to speak also on the amendment uh, in support of the amendment. The amendment is a clarification that that does not change policy in the bill, but one which I understand is, is important to many of my colleagues, consistent with another savings clause that generally protects state tort and contract actions for remedies. Language specifies that the state requirements that the bill otherwise preempts do not include state tort actions for damages. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this amendment, and I yield back my time. Is there anyone else seeking time to speak on the amendment? Seeing none. Uh, there is no further discussion. The vote occurs on the amendment. All those in favor shall signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Are there further amendments to the bill? Seeing none, the question now occurs on forwarding the TOSCA Modernization Act of 2015 as amended to the full committee. Uh, this would be a roll call vote, so the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Harper. Aye. Mr. Harper votes aye. Mr. Whitfield. Aye. Mr. Whitfield votes aye. Mr. Pitts. Mr. Pitts votes aye. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Lotta. Mr. Lotta votes aye. Mr. McKinley. Mr. McKinley votes aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Bouchon. Aye. Mr. Bouchon votes aye. Mr. Flores. Mr. Hudson. Mr. Hudson votes aye. Mr. Kramer. Mr. Kramer votes aye. Chairman Upton. Aye. Chairman Upton votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Aye. Mr. Tonko votes aye. Mr. Schrader. Mr. Schrader votes aye. Mr. Green. Mr. Green votes aye. Mr. Get. Mr. Get votes aye. Ms. Caps. Mr. Doyle. Mr. Doyle votes aye. Mr. McNerney. Mr. McNerney votes aye. Mr. Cardenas. Mr. Cardenas votes aye. Mr. Pallone. Mr. Pallone votes aye. Chairman Shipkiss. <laughs> Chairman Shipkiss votes aye. I'm going to ask the clerk to, to hold. I promised some members, because we went back and forth on a voice versus a roll call, to give them an opportunity to get back. So I will uh, ask her to re uh, report once that member uh, returns. Um, uh, so if there's other members who have other things to do, I'm going to wait, if that's okay with the... So you can leave.
The member's on the subway from Rayburn, so he'll be here in, a, in two or three minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas. Mr. Flores votes aye. The, all right, okay. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Rec uh, aye, please. Gentleman votes. Mr. Murphy votes aye. The clerk will report the vote. 
Mr. Chairman, on that vote, there were 21 ayes and zero nays. 21 ayes and zero nays. The bill is agreed to. Without objection, without objection staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes to the legislation approved by the subcommittee today. Without objection, so ordered. Without objection, the subcommittee stands adjourned. Even a blind sow finds an acorn every now and then, right?